Hey guys, this video is going to be a review of Nothing to Envy, Ordinary Lives in North Korea by Barbara Dimmick, which is like the third book that I read in December about North Korea. So you would think that I was getting burnt out on books about North Korea by then, but actually I really, really love this book and I gave it five out of five stars. You can tell it's a National Book Award finalist. It's just a really good book. The author of this book, Barbara Demick, is a journalist who worked as the Korea correspondent for the Los Angeles Times, where she lived in Seoul and South Korea and wrote about South Korea, but she was also in charge of writing about North Korea. And um, she decides that she's going to write about a, m multiple North Koreans who are all from the same city so they're all from the same place and it kind of provides like a broader picture of what life in North Korea is like and when she's choosing a city she doesn't want to choose Pyongyang the capital because that's where like the most privileged people go and it's not entirely accurate of life in the rest of North Korea because North Korea uses Pyongyang as like a show city for like visiting foreign people to like create the illusion that North Korea is better off than it is. So she chooses Chongjin, which is a city in northern North Korea, more towards the border with China, and she follows six North Koreans over 15 years. Um, they're defectors, they're all defectors, um, so they're all living in South Korea by the end of the book and I would almost say that that kind of creates like a certain bias towards the book like you're getting certain kinds of North Koreans because they all eventually defect so that's not like I mean a lot of North Koreans defect but it's not like the norm of the population as a whole but that being said technically you're only following six citizens but it feels like you're following so many more people because you get the stories of like all of their family and friends along the way. You have a lot of North Koreans portrayed in the book as being extremely like devout when it comes to their government and everything and don't question anything and really do look at their rulers as like gods and then you have the characters who start off kind of mostly devout and it is definitely striking that like I feel like I have to use like religious sort of terminology for this but and then they kind of get disillusioned and start realizing that things are off and then you have the people like the North Koreans who from the very beginning don't really like care aren't concerned about the government um maybe not necessarily like outright like wanting to rebel against it but aren't like concerned with it in any way especially the younger um especially the younger people in the book because they were born into a much like worse off North Korea like the older North Koreans in this book can remember when they actually had food the younger North Koreans can't and so for them it's much less about like almost worshipping a ruler than it is just trying to survive on a day-to-day -day basis so they're far less concerned with what the government's doing and things like that beyond surviving and getting food for themselves. I read Dear Leader before this which is one North Korean defector story and it's written by that defector and then translated into English um, and so that gave a very different feel than this book which is told through another person so you're getting like a second hand sort of recounting of the story. I mean it quotes them a lot but like it is someone else telling their stories so it does feel like a bit more detached in that way but not in a way that kind of like takes away from the book I don't think. I really appreciate having books like Dear Leader and getting to read North Korean defector stories firsthand because I think that's like very valuable but this is a really really well written book and it does a really good job of telling the stories of a lot of different North Koreans within like one city and getting like a really good idea of what happens in that city over a really long period of time from the point where North Korea is doing relatively well and people are eating and things seem like they're gonna go great to now like present time I can't I don't know exactly when the book ends so much but to the point where everyone's starving they're having to eat the bark of trees um, and 
all the kids are in like a state of starvation and just you see that transition through the eyes of so many different people with so many different sorts of lives. Obviously like North Korea is a very stratified society. They have very rigid classes and the people in this book fall into like all sorts of different classes within North Korea. Some who are much better off. You have one family who is um <sighs> I don't know if it would be Japanese, Korean, or Korean, Japanese. Korean, Japanese, I think. They they are ethnically Korean, but they moved to Japan, and then they moved back to North Korea because they thought that it would be, like, prosperous and everything, and then wasn't. But they're treated as, like, socially, they're supposed to be a lower class because they left Korea, but because they have family in Japan, they get money from Japan, and so they're better off financially than all the other North Koreans. So you have people from that background, you have people who are higher up and more respected than others, but like no one, like everyone who gets saved from the famine and everything are in Pyongyang basically. No one within the city does. So they all experience really, really terrible stuff. One of the women in the book starts selling cookies. Um, to make money for her family, ends up starting a successful business, even though she started off being like an ardent socialist and thinking that like she would be betraying her country if she did that and she had to like fight against that to and decide that saving and decide that getting money for her and her family was more important. There's just a lot of really great stories about people in this book. If you're at all interested in reading about like ordinary lives in North Korea, I would definitely recommend this book. I think it's a great book. It allows you to look at so many people's personal stories at once and it's just a really great, really well told book and I would highly, highly recommend it. But I think that's all that I have to say so I will see you guys later. Bye!